Welcome to this video. If you're watching on YouTube, please can I ask you to consider subscribing to my channel. And if you click that notification bell, you will be notified when I post new videos. If you visit my website, you'll find all these videos can be downloaded to your desktop in full HD. Let me show you a short demonstration as I introduce what we're going to do here. There's been a number of times where I've needed to present images in PTE AV Studio, where the image name was presented on screen automatically. We can achieve this using a text template, but of course the images do need to be named correctly first. In our camera club, we had the need to display high scoring competition images with the image title and the author's name. We added a little bit of music and a few slide styles and this monthly presentation became very popular with the members. One of the benefits was that the making of the presentation became very quick and easy to do. The hardest part, believe it or not, was getting club members to name their images correctly with capital letters in the right place. We also asked for the image title to come first and this ensured that members images were well distributed amongst those being viewed. Another benefit was that the image name would be presented automatically as part of the slide style. If we then create a theme of these slide styles applying them to a large number of images becomes just a couple of clicks. So before we get started let me demonstrate just how quick and easy it is to apply our theme of styles to a large number of images. So here we are in the main screen of PTE AV Studio. As you can see I've got a number of images here they've all been correctly titled or certainly titled for this demonstration. So I'm going to select them all with the shift click method. I have selected the first slide, hold the shift key and selected the last one and I can drag them all down into the slide list. If I click the first one I could add a blank in there and if I go to the end and click I could add a blank in there and I'm using Alt S to do that. Now I've got a number of images in the slide list here. Again, if I select the first of those, hold the shift key, scroll to the right and select the last. I can go to my styles and themes. I can go to my themes in particular. There's the set of themes that you've just been watching in my demonstration, or some of them. I'm going to double click. There we have our slideshow made. All I would need to do is add a bit of easy listening music and we're done. With PTE AV Studio open on screen let's take a look at how we can set up a simple style and also the automatic naming of the images. I've started with a new project and with the demo we've just seen you may have noticed that I used a blurred and zoomed copy of the same image being presented as the background. Now the one issue we may have with this is that sometimes a club member may create a very light toned image and then white text may not be the best choice or vice versa with a dark image and dark text. So let's change tack here just a little bit and create a neutral background where we can judge text color more easily and up at the top left of my file list you can see at least one that I've created in my image editor. Selecting the background I created at the top left we can see in the mini player it's just neutral gray and I've added a little noise but we can easily create a gradient or a solid color within PTE AV Studio. Let me just demonstrate that. If we go down to the slide list, 
I'm going to hit Alt S, the shortcut keys, to add a blank. Once the blank has been created, I can go into my slide options. I can go to one of the options here under the main tab. And maybe I could select a gradient. By default, you can see the gradient colors are quite a vivid blue and a black. We could quite easily change these to two neutral greys. Just click and we can select maybe a pale grey and a dark grey, but perhaps not entirely black. But it's going to be personal, isn't it? When I do that, I can choose whether I want it to be top to bottom or left to right. I think top to bottom looks OK to me, so click OK. There's the gradient. But on this occasion, what I'm going to use is the one I've created in my image editor. So I'm going to make a start here by just removing that one I've just created. And I'm going to double click my background three times. Now the reason I've added three is so that I've got something to start with. I've got the image we're going to create in the middle and something to move on to. To present images in this way we're going to need about 20 seconds of slide duration. So I'm going to put that into the bottom right corner. But what I'd like to tell you is I do have the keep full slide duration ticked in my preferences. So the 20 seconds I've just selected here includes the full transition on and off the screen. Now what I'm referring to here we'll find up at the top left in settings, preferences and we need to go to our project tab. There you can see I've got my show full slide duration ticked. By default this is unticked. So with the center image of the three and my 20 seconds, I can open up the objects and animation screen. As normal, we can click into that box down at the bottom right corner or into the gray area around the background you can see to get rid of that bounding box to effectively deselect the background because I want to add an image here. So I'm gonna go up to the add image icon and I can select any one of those, it doesn't really matter. Let's pick up the sailing boats. To present the image I've found in practical use that a zoom of around about 85% seems to meet my needs the majority of the time. So I'm going to suggest we stay with that for the moment. Now we're going to need four keyframes for the image animation. The first is already created automatically by the software. So I'm going to use the Alt key and the Insert key on the keyboard. And I'm going to use them to clone three other keyframes. One, two, three. After a while, you'll find you'll get quite a feel for the animation timings that you need. How long you need for certain things to happen. For example, I'm going to set my second keyframe at 4 seconds and my third at 16 seconds. So I've got 4 seconds for the image to float onto the screen and 4 seconds for it to leave. So just for the moment I'll put my fourth one up the end where it needs to be. This one, I might as well do this one first, I can set that at the 16 second marker and I'm going to use keyframe time for that and the second one will set to four as I mentioned. There we've got the four positions so from this position we need to decide where the image is going to start from and the center part is where we view it and from here to here it's going to move away from the screen. So selecting the first keyframe at the extreme left I'm going to decide what to do with this image. I'm going to make the image small and I'm going to place it into the top left corner. So I'm going to use my pan controls and my zoom controls over on the right. 
First of all with the zoom I want to take it down to something like that. I think before I actually position it what we could also do is take off the opacity. Now you can either click and drag but you can right click and set zero because I want my image over on the left tucked up in the corner with maybe just a little bit of rotation. So the animation from the first keyframe to the second is that. But in actual fact as I look at it I'd like this to be slightly to the left and maybe not quite so square in the frame and down just a little bit so that I've got a little bit of space above for the text. So let's adjust it just a bit. I can use the other method here. I could put my cursor into the pan X and I can hit my down arrow and I can just move that image along a little bit. I could do the same with the rotate just to give it a gentle tilt if that's what I want and back up to the pan Y just to drop it down just a touch so I've got room for the text. So let's move on to the next keyframe because what I want to do here is just roll the image a little bit to the right not a lot something like that but again I'll pan it this way now and I think that looks okay but I've got to come down just a touch just in case I clash with the text so just a quick recap we're starting there the image comes down to that point it's going to move very slowly over the 12 seconds we've got to view it it is 12 seconds yes my arithmetic is okay not too keen on that rotation I think I'll just straighten that a little bit just leave a little bit but from this point to the end let's do the same as we did at the start but we'll bring the image down to the bottom right corner so once again we can reduce the size and we can bring this down here and we can decide to rotate it if we wanted to and of course we can either click and drag or right click and remove the opacity so there we have the animation didn't take too long at all there there and there let's go back to a point where at least we can see the image now we need to add some vital speed options coming onto the screen our small image is hidden within the fade we can see the fade at the top of the timeline so the best speed option is going to be slow down for the pan the zoom and the rotate so let's select the right keyframe which is the one at the start I can go to the animation tab add a modifier animation slow down the same for the zoom and the same for rotate now we've got to do the same thing leaving the screen but here because the image is going to disappear into a fade we need to use accelerate now remember it's always the keyframe that starts the animation that requires the modifier speed so here it's keyframe 3 so once again add a modifier speed accelerate and the same for the other two now we'd normally test to make sure we've got this right although we can't see the fade onto the screen if I put my cursor at the start there I'm gonna press play and we'll just let the 20 seconds run so there's the image fading or coming onto the center of the screen there we've got that nice little bit of movement between left and right very gentle doesn't spoil our enjoyment of the image and of course the image is going to leave the screen down at the bottom right corner and be hidden within that fade the one thing we could do to make things a little bit nicer is to just select any one of these keyframes go back to our properties we could add a shadow I've got a I'm gonna click the customization because I've got one that I set up in a previous video called Barry's where I just reduce the distance and the size a little bit 
and maybe increase the opacity you can see a slight change but I'd also like to add a thin border nothing quite as thick as that but of course it's a personal choice if I was going to use a thick border like this I'd probably take the whiteness away I'd use a light grey which still looks white but it's not going to be quite in your face if I'm going to stay with white then I usually make this quite low and if you click into the grey area just to lose that boundary box there I think we can see that doesn't look too bad at all so going back and selecting regatta from the right hand side once again let me have one more little test of that and that looks a little bit nicer on the eye I think a little bit of drop shadow that thin line but don't forget we can always change these if we view them three or four times and change our mind which we're likely to do quite a bit with audio visual so let's think about adding the text now to do that I'm going to click into the grey area once again to remove the selection from the image called regatta because I want to select my text type tool as normal the first keyframe is created for us and we're going to need four keyframes for this too so once again I'll use alt insert and I'll hit one two three now I think six seconds will be long enough to read our title so my second keyframe can be positioned three seconds before the halfway point well the halfway point is 10 seconds so my second keyframe can be set at the seven second point so if I select that and go to my animation tab I'm going to use my favorite method which is just to type it in the third needs to be three seconds after the halfway point so that needs to be at the 13 second point so if we select that we can do that and it follows then that the first needs to be just a second before this one and the fourth a second after this one so let's set them up the first one then needs to be at the six second point and number four needs to be at the 14 second point so there we have the text is going to appear on screen sit there for six seconds and leave the screen but we're still enjoying the image as that happens now before we go any further I'm going to select the first keyframe I'm going to hold the shift key and select the fourth and all of the others in between will be selected then I'm going to go up to my zoom I'm going to make my text quite small on screen about zoom 3 then using the pan Y I nearly went to pan X there but X is left and right Y is up and down and it's the up and down that I want so that's where my text is going to sit so now we need to select the first of the keyframes just the first of the keyframes because that needs to be or have the opacity set to zero doesn't it because from this point to this point the text is going to fade on screen to that point we view it to this point once again it needs to fade off one more little demo so you can see exactly what we have there's the image appearing on screen as we programmed it here comes the text and the text will be removed from screen I think six seconds is long enough maybe three zoom is a little bit on the low side but again that's going to be personal isn't it three or four I think is about the limit now we need to select the template but an odd thing is going to happen so first of all I'm going to go over to my text I'm going to go to the properties I'm going to remove the word text highlight and delete because I want to go to insert text template and the choice I'd like to make is picture name you can see you've got a lot of other choices here if you want to add the picture width and the picture height you can add more than one template together but here we just need the picture name 
but when I move my cursor to a point where we can see the text we can see the text is actually saying background and that's not right is it now the reason this has happened is because we selected our background first and PTE AV Studio thinks the background is our main image and it isn't now we can change that quite easily in the properties so first of all I'm going to select my regatta or my background I think we'll do the background first you can see what I mean it's picking it up as the first main object untick that you'll notice that the text disappears when I select regatta and tick this to make that the main object then you can see the correct title appears at the center top of our artwork now to really test our animation and our automatic title we really could do with a couple of images at least either side of the one we've just made just to see how they look within a batch so let's make a quick slide style of what we've just created here and then apply that to a few images and see how they look so I'm going to go to my top right and close this window down I would probably do a full screen preview of this just to make sure I'm happy with the settings before I proceeded but what we need to do is to select the center image and we're going to go to our styles and themes I'm going to go to my styles tab and to the tools and I'm going to choose to create a style we're given the opportunity to either select a category or create one I think I'll just create one temporarily for this we'll just call this video tutorial and I'll call it number one of course we can put who we are in this box and any instructions or comments we want but I think we're okay to click create now we need to select a few images so I can get rid of this background now with the delete key so let me select this one this one this one this one I could select the whole lot if I select the first and the last and I go to my styles and themes I need to locate my styles and also my new category of video tutorial double click the style you can see we only need one image and there we can see what we've created what I'm going to do now is just run a very short demonstration so we get to see at least three or four of these images strung together to see how they look when they merge from one to the other once we have our first slide style made and we're happy with it it's then not too much trouble to adjust how the image appears and disappears from the screen we can vary these settings and save other slide styles so we create some variation on a theme and talking of themes these slide styles can be added to a theme and applied to a whole batch of images as we demonstrated right at the start of this video let's go down to our slide list if we were creating a slide style we can apply it to a few slides such as these 
If I were to select the second of these and go to the Objects and Animations screen, I can select both the text and the image itself and I can see all of the keyframes that we first created. So if I wanted to make a slight change to give a bit of variation to what we've created, then I've only got to change really the keyframe that begins the image and the keyframe that ends the image. So for example, I could just select that first keyframe and I could make an adjustment and maybe have the thumbnail coming from the bottom left corner and maybe I could put a different type of rotation and even some rotation wire perhaps. Try it and see how it looks. And the same thing here. If I go to my last keyframe of my image, rather than have it leave the screen at the bottom right, well then let's take the opposite tack again and move it up to the top corner. And once again, we can make some variation with how it actually moves when it leaves the screen, both with the rotation, Y and X. It's a little experimentation, but quick and easy to do. And of course, if I put my cursor back at the start and press play, we can see the effect we've had because everything else will remain the same. It wouldn't take very long to make a complete set of six or eight of these different slide styles. Then, of course, we can easily add them to a theme. So let me take the opportunity to quickly save this as a second style. So I'll whiz up to the top right and close the Objects and Animations screen. Make sure I have the correct image selected. Go to Styles and Themes and the Styles tab and the Tools and select Create Style. And what we'll notice is that as long as we're doing this in one sitting, in other words we haven't closed PTE down, You'll notice it'll remember the category we've been working in. It would remember the author and any comments we wrote too. So all I'd have to do here is change the name to number two and create. So as you can see, it takes only a few seconds to make these derivatives. And I could jump to the next one, make a different change there. And before long, I've got six or eight different variations on what we created here. Now as you can see by the spinning round of the screen, I've gone ahead after creating that second slide style and I've just created a third and a fourth using slight variations but I could have gone on and made another four or sixteen or as many as I had time or the inclination to make. Once I've got them made, then I can apply them to a theme. So let's do that with these four. I'm going to go down to my themes. I've already got a category called presentation. This is the theme set that I showed right at the start. So if I go down to the tools here and create a theme, the first thing I can do is to look for that category and I'll just give this a name. I'll just call this one Auto to distinguish this from the previous one. As, as per normal, we can put details of who we are and any comments we wish to make. Sometimes if we're applying certain styles, we may want to have a standard fade at the beginning and end. And if we do that and position them at the right place, we can tick a box here and say we'll use that one for the beginning and that one for the end but the rest will either come up in the order we created them or we can tick the box and have them coming up in random order. I need to go and find them. There they are. I need to tick the box. There we can see all four of them. I can add or remove. I can change the position of each one. I could go into one of my other folders and select slide styles of a completely different type and add to this theme. But as long as I'm happy, I can click OK and the theme has been created. Now as you can see by the change on screen, I've cleared my slide list once again. I've just added a blank, but all 17 images 
that you can see from the file list above. If I select the first of these, scroll to the end and select the last, even though the theme only contains four slide styles, we can apply that theme to as many images as we wish. Of course those styles will be repeated but there's going to be a break between them because we've got four variations and then we'll get the next four variations and so on. So here I would need to go to styles and themes. There's my category. There's the original style that I showed right at the start. Here's the one we've just made and we should see something different and there we have it. So I can apply that to all of the slides in this set. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.